Welcome back to the workshop. Today, you need to tune in because I'm about to save you a whole bunch of money. Watch this video before you buy a Pentax K1000, please. Now, please don't be too upset with me. I'm not saying that the K1000 isn't a great camera because it is. This is my third K1000. I keep selling them because the prices are so high, it's insane not to. I buy them like this one for like 10 bucks on wherever I get them. And then I look on eBay and they're selling for 150 bucks. So I sell it and make a quick buck. And then I buy cameras that I actually think are good. Now listen to me very carefully. People treat this camera, this K1000, they treat it like it's gold, like it's made of gold. I have, I have no idea what it would look like made of gold, but let's find out. Let's gold this camera up and see how it looks and see if we're in love with it like everybody else, like the Midas touch. Let's turn it gold and let's see what's up. Let's go. This is the camera that's causing you trouble. It's causing you a headache. And the reason it's causing you a headache is because it's so good. People are gonna tell you to buy this camera when you start out in photography, and I get it. You need a camera that has a fully manual mode, but also can meter for you and tell you kind of what exposure to use. That is why K1000 does a great job. It's a really good, solid, working class camera. Now this particular one, I picked up on eBay, it was over $100. Now this K1000 gave me a headache when I bought it. 15 people were bidding and it wound me up. I just want a camera that is readily available and does everything the K1000 does. So let me show you one that's gonna cost you one fifth of the price. Check this out. In this tiny little box is a camera that I paid seven to eight dollars for on eBay. So let's have a look, let's see what's going on, and let's see what all the fuss is about. First, I need a sip of my tea, don't I? You know, the British Empire really did run on tea. Tea leaves, I guess, tea leaves. They didn't have tea bags back then, did they? Tea bags. Okay, let's have a look what we're dealing with. Now, like I said, there are a few cameras on the market that are off the radar, and I'm gonna be showing you some of them very soon. And the reason is, is that my Pentax crew gets overused in my experience. So I wanted something to mix it up, and I wanted to look at these more obscure brands. That is actual leather, that's a leather strap. I said eel because I thought it was that plastic, and it's not. Beautiful work of art. Look at that, baby. That is the Bell & Howell FD35. Why am I advising you to buy this camera rather than the Pentax K1000? Because this camera goes for upwards of $200. That is so dumb. Please don't spend $200 on the K1000. Yes, it does have five hundredths of a second faster shutter speed, but who cares when you're starting? Listen. Are we shooting Formula One with our freaking 35 millimeter cameras? No. Now, if you want to spend less than 10 bucks, boom, you'll probably actually find these for like 20 bucks, but you can find them for less than 10 bucks. The Bell & Howell FD35. Why would I push you towards this obscure FD35 then? Watch this. You guys know this camera. If you've watched my channel, you know that this is my baby. This is literally a part of my family. At the moment, 
My Canon AE-1's got some uh, Artisan 100 in it, the black and white um, that was expired. I got it for five bucks. I've just been shooting some black and white with this. This camera and this camera are very similar. Watch this. So why would I buy a camera then with such an obscure background? Real simple. This is my AE-1 we're just talking about. At the moment, I've got a 100 mil lens on it. Beautiful little 100 mil. This lens costs no money, no money. It's an FD mount and oh my God, what on earth is going on? I now have a beautiful, beautiful, inexpensive Canon lens on this wonderful Bell & Howell FD35, which I picked up for no money. Now, if you want to save money and if you want to shoot 35, this is the way to do it. Bell & Howell, back in the day in the 60s, I believe 62, commissioned Canon to make them a camera that they could use and rebadge. So Canon did so, they made this, the Bell & Howell FD35. And this definitely rivals the K1000. You can hate on me all you like, Pentaxians. Now this was basically the same as the Canon TX. Now. If you can pick up a Canon TX, do it, but the Canon TX costs twice as much as the Bell & Howe because no one really knows about this camera. Now, if you're wearing this camera and you're rocking around with it and people see you and they're like, what's going on with that retroness? You'll be like, that's a Canon TX. Go out and get a Canon TX or a Bell & Howe FD35. The lenses are readily available and they still roll fully manual, but you can meter with them. Let's go on a photo walk. Let's check out this beautiful 100 mil lens. Let's do this. So I was lucky enough to take this beautiful Bell & Howe Canon camera on a photo walk. It's a botanical gardens. It's just a great place to go and test a camera. The reason is, is because there's so many different colors and textures, a great place to test your photography skills and indeed a great place to test a camera. But don't forget, all these are, if you're starting in photography, are a medium. It's a tool, transform this film, this is 35 millimeter film into this, an image. An image that you create from the film via the camera, print it out and you get your image. It's nothing more than that, okay? And this is where we get caught up. People are spending far too much money on these camera bodies, certainly when they're starting out, spending all their money on the camera bodies, not enough money on glass, and not enough money on those journeys, expeditions, travel, going out there and actually experiencing these things and taking images, making images of things that you actually wanna remember. So before you go out and spend a fortune, and when you're starting out, a couple of hundred bucks is a small fortune. Don't spend all your money on the gold. Save your money. Buy these more obscure brands and try them. At the end of the day, this has an FD mount. You can use those Canon FD lenses. Once again, thanks for stopping in. I hope I saved you some money. I hope I saved your friends, your family some money. Yeah, if you find a K1000 for a decent price, pick it up but I would really suggest saving your money, using it for glass and using it for travel. Oh, and just between me and you, get yourself one of these if you're starting out. A DSLR, a digital, this is Nikon, get whatever brand you want, CCD old school camera. It has an LCD screen on the back. It has built-in metering. It has autofocus, but it still has a fully manual mode. You're not spending all your money on film, you're not having to waste your time developing the film. 
you can just download the images to your laptop and see how you did. Also, the feeling and the vibe I get from these old school CCD cameras and the images that I get, I know people throw that phrase around, film light. But really, with today's presets on Lightroom, you can get a pretty decent vibe. And with these old school low megapixel cameras, it tends to be a really kind of grainy, interesting image anyway. Thanks for checking out this video, the Bell & Howe FD35. I don't think I'm gonna sell this. I think I'm gonna keep it. It feels like a Winchester rifle. It looks great on the shelf. I have a bunch of FD glass and I really enjoyed the way it felt. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.